Good morning out there in YouTube land. So this little video is um, just a short clip of me presenting uh, Ray Comfort's book, Defender of the Faith, to my church. King Charles was coronated a few days ago. <laughs> And I had asked my pastor if I could just do a short presentation on this book and how we can use it um, as a stepping stone to reach out to people to talk about Jesus Christ. Because evangelizing is hard. <laughs> and this book that uh, he wrote makes it a little easier because it takes a topic that is hot at the moment, the coronation of King Charles. People are interested in it. And you use it as a stepping stone. Um, so here's my little speech that I gave in my church. I was very, very nervous. <laughs> I did leave out one important, very important point. And when I sat down and looked at my notes and realized I forgot it, I was really, really um, disappointed because I had notes. But I was so nervous that I forgot to look at my notes once in a while. <laughs> so here's the point. The woman, Jen, that I talked about, when we started talking and started talking about Jesus Christ and God, she said to me, I have to admit, I've been praying a lot. I've been praying a lot, asking God, what direction am I supposed to go in? And I said to her, well, God answered your prayers. And here's your signpost. And and I think it's really important that, that I, I had shared that and I forgot. And I'm so sorry that I forgot. But I'm sharing it with all of you. You can see that the Holy Spirit directed our paths that day. She'd been praying for direction. It was not a coincidence that I was there. Because even though she had said that her mom was interested in the King Charles thing, she, Jen, was interested in, in knowing God. And I, and I said, well, here's your signpost. I said, read this book. It will help you. I'm just skip over the King Charles stuff. But get to the meat of it. It will help you. And, and I pray for her. Dear Lord, I pray that Jen does find the right path to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And I hope you join in my prayer with me. Thanks. So watch the clip, enjoy it. I hope you enjoy it. Have a great day, be blessed, and go play with your dog today. <laughs> I know I am. <laughs>
<laughs> but in Mark 16, verses 15 through 18, and I know none of you have seen this. <laughs> I keep them hidden. So it's three things today I did that was tough. <laughs> so Mark 16, 15, actually I'm only going to read 15 and 16. And he said to them, go into all the world. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And again, referring back to the previous scriptures, how can they believe if they don't hear? So I'm going to bring up a word on love, too. We all have read this, 1 Corinthians 13, 13, faith, hope, love, but the greatest of these is love. And we all know, love your neighbor as yourself, and we've all read that scripture, if I speak with the tongues of angels but don't have love, it's nothing, it's like a sounding breath, and it's worthless. So my question to you as Christians, that you've been commissioned to evangelize, how can you say you love human beings? But you don't try to pull them back from the depths of hell. How many people out there are lost and are going to be condemned? We need to reach them. Now, trust me, evangelizing is hard. I know most of you, and none of you are going to throw rotten tomatoes at me or put me down if I tried to talk to you in a parking lot. And yet I was still afraid to come in here and speak. All right? So I know evangelism is hard. But it starts with a smile. It really does start with a smile. And I'm going to give you a testimony of what happened to me in a park. I was at one of those little library boxes, those free little library boxes, and I was, I was putting books in the library box. And a woman goes past me, and most of you know me, I'm not really like, you know, if your dog went by, I'd say hi, but the person walks by, I'm like, yeah, I'm not interested. But she went by, and I turned, and I smiled at her. And she smiled back, and I said good morning, and she said good morning back. And then she said, it's a little cold out. And I said, yeah, but the cold is good. Get your blood going. It's a great day. She turned to me and said, I love your positivity. And I said, well, you know what? I have good news. Yes. Now, Amen. it's nice that the song brought up that Christ is king, because yesterday in England, they... Yeah. Done a new king yesterday. They coronated a king. So this is a topic of discussion for some people. So I looked at her and I said, well, you know about the coronation of King Charles that's coming up? She says, yeah. And I said, do you know what it all stands for? He is actually has a title called Defender of the Faith. She's like, really? And I go, and all the robes and the scepter and the orb all has symbolic meaning. She says, I'm not really interested, but my mom loves this kind of stuff. And this is what I did. Sorry, I forgot a prop. <laughs> I said, give her one of these books. And she took it. And then we stood there for about 10 more minutes talking about Jesus Christ. Amen. And the great thing is, the woman's Jewish. She goes, oh, I'm Jewish. I go, that's okay. <laughs> and continue talking to her. This book was written by a guy called Ray Comfort with livingwaters.com. He gave out thousands of these for free. I got a case of these for free, no shipping, because evangelism is part of his heart, too. Mm -hmm. This book is great because the first couple chapters just talk about the history of the King of England and why he's called Defender of the Faith. Then it goes into the symbolisms, what they all mean. But woven throughout the whole thing is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, what a great way to just go, hey, did you watch the coronation? You did? What did you think about it? Here, have a book. It's that easy. Hand it to him. Run away. <laughs> Listen, you know, the, you know the sower of the seeds, right? This is what a farmer does when he's got seeds. Okay? Some fall on fertile ground and some don't. You're going to hand these books out. Some are going to fall on fertile ground and some won't. But each one I hand out, I say a little prayer. Yeah. I pray it fall 
on fertile ground and that somebody else can come by and help water it and nurture it, but really it's God and the Holy Spirit that's going to do that. Um, so it's that easy. I have a box of 30 books. I also, I forgot another prop, hold on. <laughs> Sorry. I told you I was nervous. I also have a package of these pamphlets, uh, tracks I guess you could call them, that if you don't want to bring a pocket full of books with you to shop right, put a couple of these in your pocket. Looks like money. So people are like, ooh, it looks like European money. Ooh, that's really cool. It's got the gospel message on the back. When you go into the grocery store, put some of these in your pocket. When you're standing in line, say, did you watch the coronation of King Charles? Really cool, right? Here, here you go. You don't have to take it any more than that. If that's fertile ground, they'll read it. Oh, Let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that's it. I think I'm actually done. <laughs> so I'm going to leave the box here with the pamphlets. I ask one favor of you. Don't take the book and keep it. Read it if you want to. That's great. But sow that seed and give it to somebody yeah. else. Okay? Same thing with these. Yeah. Take a few. Pass them on. Sow seeds. Yeah. Okay. I'm done. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Joe Marie told me about this.